In this video, we'll be going through a introduction to Akka Cluster. It's a quick start video with an included dashboard to help uh, demonstrate some of the things about what happens in Akka Clusters. So this is a part one of a series of videos about how Akka Cluster works. And it's a getting, getting started video. Hi, my name is Hugh McKee. I am a developer advocate for the Akka platform at Lightbin. So what you'll be learning in this video is it's a bit of an introduction to Akka Cluster. Akka, there's a lot to Akka Cluster, but we'll be taking kind of a, a, a first look at it. And to, to do that, I'll be showing you how to grab a demo project and install it and run it. And in this demo project, is, it includes a dashboard. And I'm showing an example of it here. That Here's a dashboard. It's a web-based uh, dashboard that you'll be able to bring up from the sample project. And it shows it's a visualization, a live visualization of a, of a running cluster. So hopefully this will make it more interesting to go through uh, some of the things in this video and other videos that will be using this dashboard as well, where we can play around and experiment with, uh, you know, do some interesting things with a cluster and, and learn a bit about the mechanics of, of the cluster itself. So to to run this project, you're going to need just a few things. You'll need Git, you'll need Java 8 or above, you'll need Maven, and then here's the link to the GitHub repo to, of the sample project. It's under my name in GitHub. It's mckeeh 3 is my username, and then the project is called aka-type-java-cluster. So before I get into the actual layout and what's happening in this dashboard, I want to show you how you can follow along and get this project and, and build it and run it uh, on your own uh, laptop or, or desktop or whatever your development environment happens to be. So first thing I need to do is stop this cluster because there's a cluster running right now on my laptop. So there's some scripts provided in this project that I'll show you in a moment that you can use to, to make it easy to, to run this demo, start and stop the, the cluster. So right now I'm going to just stop this currently running cluster. And what we should see in the dashboard actually is that it, things are shutting down. You know, things are changing. You can see those that are saying they're leaving and so on. So I'll just wait for a moment while this whole thing shuts down. It just takes a little bit. All right, everything's down. So I'm going to close this tab for the dashboard and we'll, we'll start by grabbing the project and building it. So let's build a project. I'm going to go to a command line window here to, to do that. And the first thing I want to do is remove the old project. So I'm going to go up a directory and then remove this old uh, project directory. And then here's the git command to download or you know, to clone the project. It's just under my name in GitHub, mckeeh 3 is my handle in GitHub. And then the project is aka-type-java-cluster. You just grab this, and when we, we uh, it gets created, we'll cd into this directory and do a Maven clean package. So the, the, the requirements for this uh, project are pretty simple. It, you need Git, of course, to grab the, the code, the source code. You need Java to be able to compile it and um, run it, and you need Maven to actually do the build. So the build is done. So once the build is done, we can move on and actually start up the cluster and start playing with it. So to bring up the cluster, there's a, a script provided in this project. If I show you uh, some of the files that are in this project, you can see there's a lot of different scripts. The, there's a main script, though, and that, that uh, you use kind of as the base. So the main script is just called Akka. If you just dot slash Akka in this, in this project directory and hit enter, it'll give you a help of the commands or subcommands that are provided in, in this script. So the, the subcommands are broken down into three different areas. There's uh, an area of subcommands that are focused on doing things at the cluster level. So starting a cluster, start stopping a cluster and, and getting uh, information about the cluster. There's a, another set of commands that are at the node level. And I'll explain what a node is in a few minutes, but 
there's another set of commands, starting nodes, stopping nodes, killing nodes, downing nodes, and so on. And then there's a third set of commands that are focused at the network level. And this is for doing things at the network because ACA clusters run in a network. You know, they, so in this video, though, I'm really going to be focusing on introducing you to some of the commands in, uh, in the cluster area and in the node area. And later on, there'll be videos that, that cover more about this, uh, the network stuff. So the, the next thing to do is to let's start up the cluster and bring up the dashboard. To start the cluster, of course, there's a script, so we can do a um, ACA cluster start. And you can provide a number after the start, and that would be the number of nodes you want to start in a cluster if the default is nine. So I'm just going to bring up a cluster of nine nodes. So what's happening here is that on my laptop, it's starting up nine different JVMs. Each JVM is a different process, but they're starting up and they're configured to run and uh, communicate and listen on different ports. So I'll uh, explain more about that, but basically we're, f we're bringing up a cluster. So it takes a little bit for the cluster to come up, but then once it's up, we can use the dashboard and the dashboard can be brought up using this command, ACA cluster dashboard. And all is well that we've got an up and running cluster. So now we have a, a running cluster. We have nine nodes up and running. Everything shows green. And I want to kind of walk you through some of the um, information that's shown in the dashboard as we do things to the cluster. So actually what I want to do is bring the cluster back to the state that I originally showed at the beginning of the video where we had some interesting different colors and you know darker green and, and red and so on. Uh, so, so let's go, at, go ahead and uh, run through that sequence to get to, get to that point. And while, and while we're doing that, I'll explain some of the things that are happening in the dashboard. So to start, the, the first thing I need to do is, um, there were three nodes that were different colors. It was node one, node five, and node seven. Node one, node five, node seven. So first I'm going to uh, do something to one and five. I'm going to stop nodes one and five. So to do that, there is a script you know, with the ACA script, just ACA node stop one and five. And we should see pretty quickly in the dashboard is nodes one and five are leaving the cluster. And you can also see things propagate through the cluster in the dashboard. So if you caught it, um, you you could see some of the different nodes at different times changed what the view of the cluster looks like. So now we're showing uh, different things, you know, and and what's so what's happening here? What has changed, and why is it being kind of repeated in most of the different um, views of the of the cluster from these different parts of the dashboard? So on the right, you know, we got the, the nine nodes. And as you can see, node one is all grayed out because it's down, it's not running. But if you look, the, the remaining nodes that are also running um, show a different view. And beca because also node five is down and it shows grayed out as well. So looking at 2552, this is 2552's perspective of what's happening in the cluster. So 2552, is seeing it, it also that nodes one and five are down. So same with two, five, or three, and the rest of the nodes in the cluster. But you also saw as this was happening, each node uh, recognized these changes, not you know, kind of at their own pace because that's just the way it works. These are independent processes running uh, and talking to each other across the network. And this is how these processes coordinate with each other. But they converge on a, a view, a consistent view of the, the, the cluster. On the right-hand side, also note that things have changed a little bit. The, the leader is now on 2552, the second node in the cluster. So the L you know, that's shown in the map has also moved. So we can see, of course, 2551 and 5 are down, nodes 1 and 5 are down. So the leader has moved to 2552. 
and the oldest has moved to 2553. Five, five, so what's the leader and what's the oldest? Now, the leader is a um, interesting role, but it's not a really important role. You can look up in the documentation exactly what the leader does, and it's well explained there. But my goal here is to de-emphasize the importance of the leader. Often, because often we think of this in, you know, is there a master in an ACA cluster? And there is no master in an ACA cluster. It's a masterless type of system, which is brilliant, I think, it, because uh, many clustered like systems work on this concept of there's a leader and, and then there's um, worker nodes or subordinate nodes to the leader. He, in ACA, it's a leaderless system. However, there is one specific, really important role that the that a leader does in the ACA cluster. It's not a master, it's not in control of the whole cluster, but it, it, it's a point to make a decision. And the point for making a decision is that the leader decides if it's okay for new nodes that are joining the cluster to actually go into a fully up state. Now in the second part of this video series, I'm gonna be going into really focusing on the life cycles of nodes running in the cluster. This it's very really nicely documented in the ACA documentation, but I want to show you this, and this is one of the, also one of the big goals of this dashboard is to, to show you some of the life cycle behavior of nodes in the cluster. We'll get a little bit of, it, of an intro to it here. So, all right, so nodes one and five are down. Now also notice that the oldest has moved. Now the oldest is the, the node that's been running the longest. So right now apparently node 2553 is the oldest node. Just a moment ago, it was 2551. That was the first one that started, and it had the oldest. But when it, when 2551 went down or stopped, then um, the oldest node was found, and it happened to be 2553. So the oldest is used to do um, really the main thing it's used for is what's called cluster singletons. And I, I'll have an, another project in this series a different project, a different repo in GitHub that will go into uh, cluster singletons. But for right now, I just wanted to explain the concept of an oldest. And again, the documentation does a much better job than I'll do here about what the oldest is. But the oldest is where a cluster singleton actor or cluster singleton actors run. And what uh, that's it's a nice pattern that's used when you want to have a single actor in the entire cluster running and maybe you're using it for doing some kind of um, cluster-wide types of uh, activity, maybe you know, a, a, like a, a thing that decides for the whole cluster um, something that's important for your actors. But it's, it's a, a common pattern. So these singleton actors, by design, out of the box from Akka, cluster run on the node, on the oldest node. So that's why I'm showing this here in the the in the dashboard. So the next thing I want to show you is uh, killing a node, and uh, there's and explain the difference between stopping a node and killing a node. So before I start talking about the explanation, let's just kill a node. So as you might expect, I can node kill, and here I'm going to uh, kill node seven. So go back to the dashboard, and what we should see pretty quickly is node seven goes away. But also notice that the remaining nodes in the cluster show that node seven is unreachable. So what does that mean? Well, uh, you know, the, the idea is that all these nodes that are currently running the cluster are monitoring each other. They're gossiping with each other and they're, you know, they're saying, are you there, are you there, are you okay? And, and that type of thing. So they've been all humming away, uh, you know, behind the scenes, talking to each other, you know, forming their own kind of mental map of what the, the cluster looks like from the perspective of each node in the cluster. And all of a sudden, node seven just stopped responding. Node seven's not talking to anybody anymore and node seven's not responding anymore. So from the perspective of these other nodes, they go, oh, well, node seven is unreachable. This is a change in the um, what all the nodes agree to in, as far as the state of uh, node seven. So in the dashboard, it turns red. So you can see down below here on the right that 2557 is showing is a, being in a state of unreachable from the perspective of the rest of the nodes in the cluster. 
Also notice that the dashboard is showing the leader in red. And this is to um, kind of indicate that the leader is in a state where it can't do its primary job, which is to bring new nodes that join the cluster to a fully up state. And now we can do the final step to where I can show you what we originally saw at the beginning of the video. I'm going to restart nodes one and five. And what we should see in the dashboard is those nodes come up pretty quickly, but they show in a what's called a weekly upstate. So again, in the next in part two, I'll be covering what the, all these different things are. But really, what's happening is all right. Everybody saw nodes one and five uh, want to join the cluster, but the cluster is kind of in a weird state, and we don't know what's going on with node seven. Is node seven going to suddenly come back? and you know, rejoin the party. Right now, we don't know because we can't talk to Node 7. You know, we don't know if Node 7 is still running or not. It, it could be running, but it can't talk over the network. Who knows? All we know is we can't talk to it. So the leader is the one that makes the decision. You know, Should these new nodes that are joining the cluster, should they go to an upstate? And the leader can't because the leader knows that there's at least one node in uh, unreachable state. So this is what we saw at the beginning of the, uh, of the video here, that the dashboard is showing these kinds of things uh, happening in, in the cluster. So that's it, you know, a, kind of a quick introduction to this project. You know, I, you know, we covered how to get the project, do a quick Maven uh, clean and package to build it, use the Aka script to start up a cluster, and use the ACA script to kind of play around with some of the nodes in the cluster, do some different things, and so on. So you, you know, again, you can uh, grab this project and download it and play with it. That's the real intent of this thing. And then, and the kind of the eye candy here, this, this dashboard that's included, is uh, hopefully something that will you know, draw your attention. And because one of the, I think one of the big challenges with something like an ACA cluster is it does things that are beyond our uh, belief initially it's like it does so many amazing things that it's hard for us to initially grasp i know that that was the case for me you know I, as i kept learning more and more about aka cluster when i first got introduced to it, it and i was un starting to understand some of these concepts it's like you're kidding it does that you know oh wow i mean <laughs> i just had kind of a series of epiphanies as i was learning about this because it was such a new way to uh, to, to write code and have that code run on multiple nodes and do things like this running you know, in a cluster where you know, actors within those nodes could talk to each other across the network as easily as they can talk to each other within the same process. It was mind-blowing for me. So that's it for this video, but what's next? Well, I'll be doing a part two of the series that will be diving deeper into the life cycles of cluster nodes. And again, here's the link to the project that I used in this video, and I'll be using in the part two video as well. If you're curious about Akka, there's a ton of documentation available in the reference material and other sample projects and other videos uh, on YouTube. But a, a good place to start, as always, is to just go to akka.io. And, and uh, from there, you can go into the docs documentation pages. And if you're interested, you can always reach out to us and talk to us some more about ACA. You can schedule a demo or, or just schedule a conversation with us. Just go to lightbend.com and look for ACA platform demo. Thanks again for watching this video and hope to see you in future ones. You can always find me on Twitter at McKeeH3 and you can reach out to me through my Lightbend email address.